What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we've got kind of a fun one for you. We're gonna learn to build the classic game Pong, the game that pretty much started modern video games. We're gonna learn to recreate that in Python using Pygame. Um, so we're gonna try to move pretty quick and fit this whole game into one video here. So uh, if you're unfamiliar with Python in general, I recommend you start with one of the um, very intro series that's on this channel. And if you like this and you want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And uh, without any further ado, let's get right into it. So uh, with any game in Python, uh, if you're going to use Pygame, the first thing you're going to want to do is import Pygame. This should be pretty familiar. And then um, the second line is just pygame.init. So you're actually calling the uh, pygame function uh, and starting the whole module. And then really the, the next thing you're going to want to do is define your screen. Uh, you can't have a game without a screen. So that's going to be uh, screen equals pygame.display.set mode. And then you define a size in pixels and put those inside of a uh, square bracket. Okay, so uh, now we've just created a screen that's gonna be 300 by 300. You can play around with the settings if you want. Uh, I, I've made this before, uh, making this video, and 300 by 300 works pretty good for Pong, but hey, you uh, can do whatever you like. So then uh, pygame.display.com set caption i like to do this second um, because you're just saying what you're going to uh, call the game so we will just call it pong reboot that's pretty sweet and then uh, let's see something i do in every game is i create a timer because um if you watched the first pi game tutorial series on this channel i talked about this in more depth but essentially um, your game will run or could be limited by the hardware that you're playing it on unless you define an FPS to play it at, like a frame rate. And so if you want to do something where it's uh, running at a fixed FPS, like 60 frames is pretty common, uh, then you need to go ahead and create yourself a timer early um, in your code and then also just create a frame rate variable, 60, 30, whatever you want it to be. Um, and we'll go ahead and use that pretty soon. So then inside your uh, code, you create your actual like game loop, which is gonna be create a variable. I usually use running, almost always use running. And then uh, while running is true, or, or you can just say while running if you're using a Boolean variable. Um, so while running is true or equal to one or whatever you want, uh, to call it, then we're going to go ahead and do timer.tick at frame rate. And so Python now knows that it's going to run at that frame rate. That's how many times it's going to run per second. Uh, that's the built in clock function. <clears throat> so that's pretty sweet. This is our main game loop. And then you have to create uh, an event to get out of the loop, right? Because right now this looks like an infinite loop. There's no way for running to ever uh, go false. So you create the event handler, which is going to start with for event in pygame dot event dot get. So that's a generic pygame uh, function for grabbing any keystroke, any click, any movement of the mouse. Uh, that's all going to be handled in the event uh, handler here. But then the first one you just want to make is uh, if event dot type is equal to and we will use the pygame built-in quit because every time it draws a screen uh, there's a, a small red x in the top right corner and that's the quit button and so if they click that then we are going to set running equal to false and then that's all we're going to put in the event for now in the event handler and then outside the event handler let's go ahead and put in <coughs> excuse me pygame.display.flip and uh, pygame.quit and that's just kind of um, last stages. The flip is, is how you uh, draw everything onto the screen but uh, let's go ahead and draw a background first. So um, just, just to have something let's do screen.fill and let's put 000 in there so that's an RGB value. And let's just see, that might be all we have to do just to get a screen to pop up. 
Fill invalid rect style object. Let's take a look here. Dot fill. It looked like it worked. Um, this might need to be in another set of parentheses. I don't know. It's just an RGB value. That looks okay. All right, I'm not sure why we needed the second set of parentheses, but we did, so put them in there. Uh, the reason um, that took me a sec, I usually like to uh, define some colors up top so that I can use those throughout and just call them uh, black, white, purple, whatever. So um, I'm going to make those now, and uh, I recommend typically when you're creating a game, build yourself a library of colors you want to use, um, create a font, that's what I'll do next here. But then anytime you need a color, rather than RGBing and trying to play around with variables, um, you have a library. And so if you really want something to be a specific color, then uh, just play around with the RGB values, but play around with them in your variable definitions up here. Okay, so uh, we drew the screen and that's pretty sweet. Why don't we go ahead and for the next thing, um, let's draw the player and the uh, like computerized right paddle. So we'll have the player on the left and the computer on the right for this game. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead right under where we did screen.fill and let's create a rectangle that we'll call the player. And the player's location is going to be equal to pygame.draw.rect and then we're gonna put it on the screen. We want it to be a white rectangle and now we give it the four arguments needed for a pie game rectangle. So this is going to be, uh, let's make it five wide and then let's make the height, or I'm sorry, this we're giving it um, X and Y coordinates first. So because in the game, what you're actually controlling when you move up and down is your Y coordinate, we're going to uh, create a new variable called player Y and that's what we'll control. But then for the size of the rectangle, let's go ahead and make it uh, 10 and 40. So you can play around with this after you draw it onto the screen and kind of figure out what works for you and if you want to change it. Um, I'm gonna create a little section here that I'm gonna call game variables. And so we need player Y. And let's go ahead and start with that equal to 130, okay? So if I just go ahead and run this, you can see our character. Yeah, so I think that looks decent for a paddle, kind of retro, um, which is really what we're going for anyways. We're just trying to create a one for one of Pong. We don't need to make it super cool or advanced. Uh, let's just get it working first. So second thing to do will be draw the computer paddle. Uh, you could make this two player. I don't have the you know, mental capacity to play both of these on a tutorial at the same time. But you could make one, for example, that uses Q and A or W and S to go up and down and the other one uses the arrow keys and two people could sit at one laptop and play the game. Um, but for now, I'm going to make it a computerized opponent. Plus that will give everybody a little bit of practice um, drawing a or a, a creating code as kind of an AI to play against, which is great practice as well to think about how a computer would handle the situation. And then, so instead of five, we want to put this on the other side of the screen. So it's going to be at 285, right? Because it's 10 wide and we want it to be five away from the right, just like the other one. Okay. So when we run it, we have player on the left and computer on the right, and it's starting to kind of look like Pong. So obviously, uh, one piece that's missing, right, is the ball, which you could make um, you could make it a circle, uh, definitely, if you want. That's more like an actual ball, but since I'm going for classic Pong, I'm going to make it a real little rectangle because that is what the first Pong game looked like. It was just a little pixel, or a few pixels, but you get it. You get it. Okay, so for uh, this ball, we're going to draw it onto the screen again. And uh, let's go ahead and make it white, just like the player and everything else. And do, do, do. I'm just, uh, you know, in the game white. I don't know what color the player is. That's not important. Okay, so, uh, sorry, bad joke. 
Now let's go ahead and the ball is actually going to be moving in the X and the Y direction, right? So let's make those variables and uh, just to start, uh, let's make it 10 and 10. I think that'll be a good size, um, but if that looks too big or something, we can change it later. But okay, so now we need to create the ball X and we'll put them pretty much dead in the center of the screen. Uh, so that'll be 145 since this is referring to their coordinates in the top left as you look at the object and they're 10 by 10. So if we want them to be in the middle, uh, we go five off. So there you can go. That's kind of um, how you want the game to look when it starts up. And that's what we've got here. So uh, that's pretty cool. Let's keep going. Now, um, first thing I think we should do is handle the player movement uh, because it's, it's not going to be too hard. And if we start coding the computers and the balls movement and the players powerless to do anything, then uh, that just seems kind of weird to me. So let's go ahead and get into some more event handling now. Um, and again, if you're following along, uh, you can use whatever keys you want for up and down. You could use the up and down arrow keys. That would make a lot of sense. Um, I've played a lot of the keyboard games that like A, S, D, W are your four directional controls. And I just like controlling the movement with my left hand. So I'm going to go with W and S for up and down. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But event dot key but you can do it however you want you can follow the same format and then obviously you're just gonna instead of here where I say if event dot key equals uh, pi game dot and then K underscore W you would use K underscore up arrow K underscore E whatever you want um, just change the key out there and uh, if that is if that is pressed, then we are going to want to move down. So I will make a variable that I'm going to call player y direction. Actually, I can just say player direction because we don't move in the x and the y. Um, so I'll just say player direction is going to be equal to negative 1. And let's go ahead while we're here and let's do the opposite. Um, and so uh, you may be thinking like, hang on, if I hit W, I want that to be up. If I hit S, I want that to be down. Yes, that does make sense, except that it doesn't. Because Pi Game uh, starts from zero, zero in the top left corner, and uh, it goes higher numbers as you go down. So um, if you think about like your Y coordinate, if you want to move up, like go from the middle of the screen to the top, you're going to be at like 150 as your coordinate in the middle of the screen, but then zero at the top. So move up, your direction is actually negative one. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but hey, I didn't make it. Okay. So K underscore S is going to be player direction equal to one. All right, and so now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we set the direction um, equal to zero initially because we do not want the player to just start out moving. And then we also want the direction to go back to zero if uh, they um, lift off the key. So let's see if event type is equal to pi game dot, and now this is going to be key up. Uh, it's gonna be two equal signs. Pi game dot key up. There we go. And if it equals K up, I'll go ahead and copy the KW and KS. I'll save us some typing time. And we're gonna set equal to zero. And so if you think about this, if you hold W down or you hold S down, you want the direction to stay up or down the whole time. But as soon as you let go of that key, you want direction to go back to zero. Um, so that's pretty cool. That'll do it. And then um, what we're going to do with that is actually let's go ahead and update the player y variable, right? So player y plus equals. And now um, let's just say that the speed is one, like one pixel per counter, which is going to be a total of 60 pixels per second. So uh, let's say it's one times 
the player direction, right? So this is why we handled it that way. When direction is zero, your Y doesn't change at all. But then when the direction is negative, you go up towards the top of the screen. When your direction is positive, you go down towards the bottom of the screen. So let's run that. And yeah, so I'm holding W and then when I let go, it stops and I can go up and down. And what you'll see is like the paddle moves very slowly. So this is kind of the first way you can start thinking about potentially increasing or decreasing uh, difficulty is with player speed. So I'm gonna create a variable. I'm gonna call it player speed and uh, I'm gonna make it a little bit faster than one. I'm gonna make it, I think three. Uh, now let's go five. Three is still a little boring. Five is totally rad, totally rad. Yeah, so I mean, I'm flying now. Uh, I mean, the idea of Pong is that like, it starts off pretty slow, but as the game goes on, it can get more progressively difficult. And uh, obviously we can do a lot of things with it today that you couldn't have done back in 72 when it was made. But this is pretty sweet right here. We've got the up and down controls um, all set. So uh, next thing I wanna do is get the uh, computer to track the ball and then I want to get the ball moving.